So let's take a short look at the user interface layout of Activate. Well, this is Activate. Um, you can see here different um, browsers and you can see a diagram area and down below the diagram area, you can see the OML command window. Um, the OML command window is basically, uh, yeah, a console where you can manipulate or change or make some processing on your data which have been generated by a simulation. And the palette browser on the right hand is of course uh, where you get your blocks from. You can just select blocks, drag and drop them into the diagram area where you will do your modeling. Um, on the left hand, also very important browser is the variable browser. Uh, this is where all your data which has been generated by the simulation will be stored and also will be accessible and you can make it visible. Yeah, this is just yeah, a short slide to modeling. Of course, again, the palette browser, you can just drag it into the diagram area, setting up your models. And of course, which is um, very nice, um, we can mix up between signal flow and component-based modeling in one model. Not in two models, in one model. We can here use signal flow-based components and object-orientated components. Like this lookup table is connected with this uh, torque component where, where you can see the tau. So this is, this is pretty nice. So, and if you want to, if imagine you have a big model, a grown model with several functionalities. You want to um, create subsystems of those functionalities. Um, and then you just click on it. On the, yeah, on the diagram part, you want to merge to one super block. And then you go to the menu bar and just click on this super block button and you will have such a nice super block like you can see here. Mm. Okay, this, this is a very important path too. Uh, we want to define parameters for our model. So there's a um, button which is called model in the menu bar again. And then you can open this initialization script. And um, this is, like most in most other simulation tools like Scilab and so on, you can just define your parameters and the model will uh, know those parameters. There's something you have to uh, look for, um, something you should know about masking superblocks. A mask is um, something that you can create for your superblock and where you can redefine variables and switch easily between variables um, to make your model more um, personalized or uh, um, how to say more yeah flexible in its usage. So you just go on edit mask, then you will have the mask editor. Then you see those objects in the dialog box. So, and there's just name parameter. Then you click on this button in the red rectangle and this parameter creator will open. So what you type in now is you will have a parameter and you will give it a name, a description. You can say if it's visible or not, sometimes it's not necessary to make parameters visible within the mask. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. And the parameter is enabled, of course. And then you type in the value. The value is a parameter which you have um, written into the initialization script, like in the slide before. 
because um, we have to reach through the value into the mask superblock, into this mask subsystem. This is very important if you mask a superblock. Well, post processing, of course, is uh, yeah one of the most important things because if we generated data, we want to visualize those data and maybe want to do calculations with those data. And therefore, for this, we have the so-called signal out block. The signal out block writes the structure into the variable browser. The structure um, is consists of the time, a timeline, we could say a time vector, or it's even a time matrix, and then of different channels. For example, if we have two connections to our signal out block, like we do have here in this example, we have two connections to our signal out block, we have a channel of two. We have two channels. So this is how we do the post-processing and the visualization. Again, we, we go onto the menu bar, click on the model, and this time we just choose the finalization script. And as you can see here, we, we read the data from, from the variable browser by accessing the structure, the time, the channels, the columns and rows of the data, we want to have, we, we would like to have, that we just make plots um, like, like down here. We create a feature, we say, oh, this is feature one or feature 10. I, I always prefer to say feature 100, feature 101, 102, or if it's a totally another kind of feature, I prefer to say feature 200. It's just because I like the way how to call those features. So, yeah, how do we start the simulation and what should we do before we start the simulation? Before we start the simulation, we should, should set our final time, which, which is the uh, simulation time, the time of our system to be simulated. Like if we want to have 3000 seconds of time in our system, we will just put it in final time. Um, other options are also, we can choose from different solvers um, which suit to our system. Uh, we not do, took a take a closer look on this right now. And then we basically, obviously we just start a simulation by clicking on this big button here with uh, the, the play sign. 